Congressman McGovern, uh, really thrilled to have you here, especially in this breaking news situation uh, with the debt ceiling, uh, which you are have been intimately involved with in, in the most elaborate parliamentary maneuver uh, called the discharge petition, which looks like uh, you're not going to need it, depending on how these negotiations are going. What can you tell us? What do you know about the state of the negotiations at this hour? Well, I, I know as, about as much as you know right now, um, and I hope we can uh, avoid uh, uh, defaulting on our debt, which means we would not pay our bills, which be, which would uh, be ruinous for our economy. Uh, but I'm interested to see the details. Um, you, know, you know, what is the price uh, uh, that we are expected to pay uh, to get this deal? And as I've been saying for a, a while now, I mean, what, what concerns me is that the Republicans, uh, their priorities are not my priorities. Their values are not my values. I mean, they want to find savings by cutting programs to help poor people, to help uh, people with child care, to help people with food benefits. Uh, and they don't want to touch defense spending. They don't want to touch tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires. And they don't want to touch subsidies for big oil and fossil fuels or, or, or big pharma. Uh, so, you know, we have to find out what the details are. And again, I trust President Biden and I, uh, and I'm a, a big supporter, but for me, I'm going to have to see the details uh, because, again, their priorities, the Republican priorities, are not my priorities. Uh, and I'm not going to vote for a bill that screws poor people. Uh, and that's what they've been pushing for from the very beginning. There's, there are no details here on uh, nutrition funding that I know is a major concern of yours. Uh, and that, that's an area where Republicans have been talking about work requirements. There are some work requirements that already exist. Uh, what is your? What are you hoping the president can achieve on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping the president can hold harmless uh, our nutrition programs and uh, and programs that help the the, uh, the most vulnerable in our country. What the Republicans keep on talking about is work requirements. Work requirements. We have work requirements in place for programs like SNAP, uh, and um, and the majority of people on the program actually work. And by the way, the benefit is on average of about six dollars uh, per day per person. That's it. Two dollars uh, on average uh, uh, per meal for every, every person. That's the benefit. Uh, and the people who are not working right now uh, who need the benefit are, are people who are homeless. Some of them are veterans. Some of them are, are people with undiagnosed mental illnesses. Kids graduating out of foster care. I mean, we they really want to go after those people and throw them off of a of a food benefit. I mean, give me a goddamn break. I mean, I can't quite understand uh, what they're thinking when when they believe it is appropriate to try to balance the budget on the backs of those people, the vulnerable in our country. But we can't touch tax cuts for billionaires. We can't touch military spending. I mean, last week on 60 Minutes, they had a former high level Pentagon official say that. Uh, the cost overruns are astounding. He talked about a uh, the Pentagon paying ten thousand dollars for a three hundred dollar oil switch. Uh, you mean to tell me you can't find one penny of savings uh, in the Pentagon budget that that's somehow sacrosanct, off limits? Uh, we can't go. We can't look there. But instead, we have to look at programs that help poor people. I mean, you know. I think it tells you all you need to know about who's running uh, the House of Representatives right now. You have now all uh, 213 Democrats signatures on the discharge petition that you are now in charge of. The discharge petition could be a way for Democrats to force a vote uh, on the increase in the debt ceiling going around uh, the Republican roadblock that the speaker represents. You would need five signatures from Republicans in order to get there to 218. Uh, do you believe that that discharge petition is uh, a working as a real pressure uh, on Kevin McCarthy, uh, forcing him closer to an agreement with Joe Biden? Well, I do, I do think it's a, pre, a, a an important pressure. I mean, because, you know, at some point, if we can't get to a deal, uh, then some of the so-called moderate Republicans, although I haven't seen them behave in a moderate way up to this point, but I think they will feel more pressure to try to avoid uh, a catastrophe for our economy. And maybe we can get them to join with us so we can bring something to the floor that is reasonable, something that is balanced, uh, something that, uh, quite frankly, the American people would think is a good deal. Uh, but look, uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy, uh, I think, is wholly owned by the MAGA extremists um, in the Republican conference. I don't think he has much control over, 
you know, what direction the House of Representatives is going to move in. He's, he's totally beholden to the extremists. And up to this point, uh, they have been unreasonable, they have been unrealistic, and they have been unhinged. Uh, and again, the stuff that we are seeing, the details of what they are trying to do, I think the vast majority of people in this country, including a number, a, a high percentage of Republicans, I think would be horrified uh, by what they're trying to do. Again, you know, going after the most vulnerable and protecting those who are well off and well connected. Uh, I, I, again, doesn't reflect my values, and I don't think it reflects the values of the majority of people in this country.